we're going to be doing some covalent Lewis dot structure practice. And our first compound is going to be H2S, which is going to have two hydrogens and one sulfur. So I'll go ahead and I will write out two hydrogens and one sulfur. Then I'll go in and add the appropriate number of dots to each. So hydrogen is in column one, meaning that it has one valence electron. So I will go ahead and add the one dot to hydrogen. And then sulfur is in column six. So that means it has six valence electrons. So I will go ahead and add the six dots to sulfur. Now I need to connect lonely electron to lonely electron. You'll notice that hydrogen only has one dot, which means it can only ever form one bond. And sulfur only has two lonely electrons available. So each hydrogen is going to connect to sulfur. And then I'll just redraw that structure with uh, prettier lines and make sure that the, Lewis, uh, that the actual dots are maintained. Now I'll make sure that everybody is happy um, and has the appropriate number of valence electrons. Hydrogen wants to be like helium who only has two, so hydrogen having one, two is perfect. This hydrogen is happy. This hydrogen also only wants to have two, so it's gonna have one, two, it is also happy. And now I need to make sure that sulfur is good to go. So we'll go through and count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So sulfur is also happy, which would make this the correct structure. Next we have N2. So N2 is going to be the nitrogen molecule and I will go ahead and draw two nitrogens. Nitrogen is in column five, so each nitrogen is going to have five total dots. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now nitrogen can only bond with nitrogen because it's the only thing that's available. So I'm gonna go ahead and go lonely to lonely. And then I'll restructure the compound so that it looks a little bit nicer. And I'll place my uh, dots that are left. Then I just have to count to make sure that this is correct and I didn't leave anybody uh, out or sad. So this left nitrogen is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, so it's happy. And this right nitrogen is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so it is also happy. So that means that that is the correct structure. Next, I'm going to have COCl2. So I am going to have one carbon, one oxygen, and two chlorines. Carbon is in column four, so it's gonna have four dots. Oxygen is in column six, so it will have six dots. Chlorine is in column seven, so it will have seven dots. Okay, now I have to be careful here. There are many ways that I could connect this. I just need to figure out the way that will make the compound the happiest. Again, trial and error is totally okay. If you can make a structure where everybody is happy and no one is left out, you're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and connect carbon to oxygen. And I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make oxygen happy uh, just right off the bat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and connect chlorine to carbon. And that gets rid of all of my lonely electrons. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna redraw this. Um, I'm going to draw carbon in the middle because it is my less, leftmost atom here. I'm gonna draw oxygen and then I'm gonna have chlorine on either side of carbon. Each chlorine had one bond to carbon 
and oxygen had a double bond to carbon. Each chlorine had three lone pairs, so I will add those back in. And oxygen had two lone pairs, so I will also add those back in. Now I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna count to make sure everybody's good. So I have chlorine here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So chlorine's good. I'll count this chlorine as well. I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one is also good. Then I'll go ahead and I'll count this uh, carbon here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is also good. And then lastly, I'll count this oxygen here where I will have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that oxygen is also good. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that this is a valid structure based off of the information that I had just from the formula. Okay, next I'm gonna have C2H4. So that means I need uh, to go ahead and draw two carbons. So I'll go ahead and do that just straight off the bat. And I need to draw four hydrogens. Carbon is going to be in column four, so it's gonna have four valence electrons. And hydrogen is in column one, so it's gonna have one. Okay, uh, there actually really isn't a whole lot of ways to mess this up as long as you're trying to make sure that everybody has an equal chance. Hydrogen can't bond with hydrogen because then it can't bond with anybody else and it can't be included. I'm going to give an equal amount of hydrogens to carbon, to each carbon. And then I will go ahead and connect the last two lonely electrons with carbon. So um, I have carbon going to be in the middle. I have two of them. So they're going to kind of function as the middle together. Between the two carbons, I have a single double bond. And then I have two hydrogens connected to each carbon. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out those uh, hydrogens connected to the carbon. There are no extra electrons here that I have to represent or make sure I add back in, so I'm not gonna worry about any dots right now, and I just need to make sure that everybody is happy. So this hydrogen, remember it only wants two. This hydrogen has one, two, so it's happy. This hydrogen has access to one, two, so it's happy. This hydrogen has access to one, two, so it's good. This hydrogen has access to one, two, so it is also good. Now for the carbons, so for carbon here, I have access to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this carbon is happy. This carbon has access to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is also happy. So everybody's good here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is a valid structure for this compound. Last one I'm going to do today is going to be PCl3. So I have one phosphorus and I have three chlorines. Phosphorus is going to be in column five. So I'm going to go ahead and add those five dots. And chlorine is going to be in column seven. So I'll go ahead and add those seven valence electron dots now. Went out of order for the last one, just ignore me. Okay, again, like this one, there's not a whole lot I can do to mess it up, at least. I know that chlorine can't be bonding with chlorine because then it would just be off by itself and be its own molecule, so I know that that's not an option, which means that I'm going to go ahead and just connect uh, the lonely electrons from phosphorus to the lonely electron from chlorine, and then I will just redraw it to make it pretty. So phosphorus being my leftmost atom will be my central atom. Each chlorine had a single bond connecting its phosphorus and chlorine. 
and then I just need to go back in and add any lone pairs. So chlorine has three lone pairs that need to be added back in for each of them. And then phosphorus had one lone pair that I need to add back in. Now I just need to make sure that everybody is good to go. So I'll go ahead and count all of the electrons for chlorine. So this chlorine has access to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's good. This chlorine has access to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is also good. This chlorine has access to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's also good. And now I just need to make sure that phosphorus is fine. So phosphorus is gonna have access to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So phosphorus is also good. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it good and say that that is a valid Lewis dot structure for that compound.